So the mission of the Utah Schools for the Deaf and the Blind is to provide a, a, a responsive, caring, innovative environment for students who have visual impairments or that are deaf or hard of hearing so that they can learn like any other student and they can experience a, a quality of life one day like anyone else who isn't blind or deaf. We have had a history of designing educational facilities and in the past decade uh, we've, we've been involved in some projects for kind of special education. Through some of that experience this opportunity arose to propose on, on this project. Uh, the main things we were concerned about was providing the resources so that our, our learners, our students, and their teachers could have all of the resources they needed instead of always making do and getting by with the minimum and sometimes not even that. So we built flexible space here where they could come in and land, prepare, have all the resources they need, and then go out and serve. It really was a, a custom project with a unique program um, a puzzle with so many moving parts. How do you design uh, a school for the blind and visually impaired that also serves as a school for the deaf and hard of hearing? It was very apparent right out of the gate that um, the excitement and the passion that they had for this and they knew it was very unique and um, the end user and what it would provide for them at the end of the day. I just can't say enough about Jacoby really, you know, caring about the caring about the, the students and the, the project and really wanting to know, like finding out about what the, how it really works and what they really need. And then they really just came through and and I think they hit home run. The biggest resource that we drew on was just these intensive workshops with the Utah Schools for Deaf and Blind meeting the blind and visually impaired community, meeting the deaf and hard of hearing community. We needed to make sure that it was really functional for such a unique group. There's a playground, or the, we re re relocated the playground right out of the gate. Um, and the relocated playground was only about 40 feet from the new structure. And so every day as the kids would go out to play, they would watch the progress of the school being built and it was really neat when I would be down there on the meetings and watch the interest that the kids had and the excitement that you could see as they as they watched it come come to pass. So one of the nice things about the Utah Schools for the Deaf and the Blind is that their education is completely customized. It's very personalized and, and to, to enable us to have that kind of flexibility and to adapt to what any child needs we really needed the right kind of infrastructure to support that, and now we're fortunate to have it. One of the big goals of this project was that the building really acted as a teaching tool. Um, you know, we, we introduced a lot of tactile panels on the walls that would change textures as you got to each respective classroom. Um, we used special uh, flooring with uh, wayfinding patterns and high contrast lines to help the visually impaired be able to kind of guide them around the building as they move from one space to another. And it was really neat to be able to take their design and their vision um, and be able to come up with ways to bring it to pass. For example, the red panels in the stairwells, making sure that they're watertight and still create the look. Um, you go there um, at nighttime when the lights are on on the inside and those red panels just glow. The red glass was um, very unique. It was a long lead item, so it was out several months. So we had to have that all figured out and exactly what size everything was gonna be. I mean, it was ordered way back, way back before we even had the roof structure in. So we had to get all the roof structure done, the whole, basically the whole building was done, and then we can come bring the glass in. Well, it was big pieces of glasses in the stairway and around all the little, the. Um, the whole curtain wall and everything so they had to access to that was tough it's not you can't drive a forklift up to it we had to I mean the slab was already done the roof was done walls were built so it was really challenging to get that big piece of material in after after the, the structure was all in and all. We have used colored glass in the past but this was at a different level where we we used a lot of it at, at big to make big landmarks in the building to create kind of these glowing 
um, these objects that, that would indicate where the entrances are, where the exits are, help the visually impaired be able to navigate, but also just create a really fun environment for the students. And even in the, the tactile kind of sensory playground, which is a, a courtyard bound by both wings of classes, you know, we integrated uh, some uh, various sensory instruments that, that were serving both for the blind who could enjoy the, the sounds of, you know, and, and, the, um, and the making of, of noise on these instruments, but then also the deaf children engage with it too for the, purely for just the vibrations um, that they create. The toys are very unique. Um, you can't just say, okay, throw a, a jumble gym and a, a basketball standard out there. You, they're very unique toys and it was really interesting seeing that and the effects. There's some fantastic design elements here in this building. The first thing I like to point out to people is what we call deaf space. Um, deaf space means a place that's designed with people in mind who can't hear. Where you and I naturally kind of hear things going on, we don't even realize that it's registering with us. Like you can hear somebody in another room. If there's a small corridor or if you have lots of little boxy rooms next to each other without a lot of visual input, we still know that there are people around. Deaf people don't have that luxury. So this, this facility was built with a lot of glass. You can see into the gym, you can see into the boardroom, you can see from the administrative area to the classrooms, you can see almost anything so people can communicate across the entire building using sign language without having to yell or shout. And even though the glass is soundproof, so we could be having a basketball tournament right next to our administrative offices. We could continue to do our work, but that visual communication is available instantly for us. The most interesting part, seeing this building after it's been built, is to realize that anybody and everybody has, has come in and sensed how colorful it is and joyful and filled with natural light and filled with big expansive views that you can really kind of see any other part of the building from from anywhere you are and it I think that goes to show that even though it's custom to designing for deaf and hard of hearing and blind and visually impaired it also is just a design that that serves anyone it just works for the larger community at hand and and uh, it, it's it's been a joy to see how it's impacted their programs and their education, that it's creating progress in, in already such an amazing mission.